this is overdue, but I think it's actually given me a chance to make some additional observations that will be useful uh, for the video. My internet setup, something that I've been meaning to publish for quite some time, as I mentioned, but just haven't. I wanted to back up a little bit and start with where I am currently staying. So I'm at a campground. The campground here, the Wi-Fi is uh, pretty terrible. When it works, it's not so good. It often just doesn't work. Uh, you don't get an IP address, you don't get internet, all sorts of issues, especially if there's weather issues and things of that nature. So fortunately, I planned for that. My experience with campground Wi-Fi, albeit limited thus far, I've only been to maybe five different campgrounds. None of them have really worked. And everything I've read has said that campground Wi-Fi is just not great. It makes a lot of sense. I wasn't expecting it to be this bad because there's so few people here, but regardless, it's not been good. Why is internet so important to me? It's not just because I'm an internet junkie and I need my, my internet to, to work for Facebook or, or anything of that nature. I am in the IT business. Uh, you can think of me maybe as a software, IT software engineer. If you're familiar with the, uh, the industry, I'm actually a site reliability engineer, and I've been doing that for 22 years, I guess, now that I think about it. So having the internet is important to me as I live full time out of the RV because I'm working remotely. And that means that Monday to Friday, uh, you know, during my work hours, at a minimum, I need my internet to be working reliably. I want my video conferencing to be working. I want my ability to interact with the systems that I work with to be working reliably. I don't want, uh, I don't want it to be slow. I don't want it to be painful to work with. I want to be able to download certain files, you know, set up files or what have you without waiting an, an eternity for them and things of that, in that nature. That is why the internet is so important to me. That is why I have set up what I have set up. And right now I'm still going through trial uh, experience. There's a fair amount of monthly money involved here that I don't plan to, to keep having. I'm just trying a lot of different stuff right now, which is a little easier to do because I'm not paying for all my utilities back at the the sticks and bricks or brick and mortar home that I sold off. That gives me the ability to, 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 to do this sort of thing. So I certainly don't expect that many of you would want to uh, pay the kind of money that I'm paying for this right now. I hope that at the end of all of this, I'll come up with a plan or two, maybe three, and have a monthly bill that's still reasonable and gives me plenty of options so that I have failover capabilities. I can go from one carrier to another. If I relocate, you know, Verizon may work really well here, but not so well, or not as well as AT&T in another location, or T-Mobile in a third location, that sort of thing. The new Air that I purchased came with the, the uh, WineGuard Connect, and that worked well as a Wi-Fi repeater, effectively. And uh, But like I said, you know, Wi-Fi, generally speaking, just wasn't good enough for that to be usable for working. And the WineGuard Connect, at least the version that I had, I don't know about the new one, I imagine it's not terribly different. You know, it has a built-in cellular capabilities, but their data plans are, are horrendously expensive, way worse than what I've set up now. The kinds of stuff that I'm doing, you know, if I step back a little bit back into you know, my data needs, when I was traveling before, I just had my T-Mobile Android phone, a Galaxy a, an S, a J3, I forget what it is, with the T-Mobile Unlimited plan, which they start to uh, do network controls on it after I think 50 gig blew through the 50 gig in two weeks I wanted really to find something that could give me truly unlimited and the kinds of plans that you were finding uh, that I was finding on the wine guard were, were um, you know they were talking about a few gig here and there for tens of dollars uh, you know and that would have added up to a lot of money very quickly and I, I wouldn't feel free to be using my internet that was that was one angle of that uh, I had in the back of my mind as I went through all of this I basically ditched the wine guard. Uh, I still have everything available to me. I can plug it in and use it if I if I want to. I ended up actually setting the SSID to be the same as what I uh, set up you know, for over my cellular, so I can kind of swap the two without having to go through the the all the equipment in the coach and, and change the settings. So uh, if I do come across you know campground Wi-Fi or just Wi-Fi somewhere uh, that ends up working well, then I can uh, switch to that without. A lot of hassle. As I searched for a new 
solution, there were a number of things that I wanted to keep in mind in addition to what I've said so far. So the first thing I, was, I wanted was a, a router that had a cell, cellular modem in it that was capable of uh, not only just 4G LTE, but advanced LTE or category six LTE that has things like carrier aggregation in it. That gives you much better speeds, uh, Nemo and that sort of stuff. So that was that was one thing that I was keeping in mind. That was not yet, uh, I wasn't even paying attention to, sort of on accident, um, paying attention to 5G. It would have been nice to have purchased something that would get me to 5G as that starts to roll out, but I imagine that's not, you know, not anytime particularly soon. So if I had been paying attention to 5G and I discovered the router that I was interested in didn't have 5G capability, I don't know that would have really deterred me from uh, from from going for that particular router. But uh, as we get closer and closer to actual 5G rollout, that's something to certainly keep in mind. And I'll be keeping my eye out for that. Uh, I will be upgrading to that as soon as it makes sense to, especially given my uh, need for speed <laughs> with respect to the internet. So there's some other things that you can get uh, with the more advanced routers. So the so when you're talking about like the WineGuard uh, Connect or um, even the SkyPro, the, the Wi-Fi Ranger routers, they tend to be a little bit more dumbed down. So you don't have a lot of advanced features such as band locking, which I'll talk about, or trickery like setting <clears throat> setting the TTL, the time to live on your packets. The, the router can do this for you in such a way because that's that's how some carriers will identify or try to identify, you know, are you on a phone or are you on a hotspot? Uh, they will manage your traffic differently. And so, for example, if you set your TTL appropriately so that the towers think you are a, a cell phone, your ping time will be greatly reduced. And that is, uh, that's another sort of advanced thing that you can, you can do with routers that are not so dumbed down. Bandlock, I might as well explain now, that is the ability to choose which frequency you want to lock into Oftentimes, a carrier will be broadcasting on multiple frequencies in your area, and your phone or your hotspot will lock onto one of them, and it's not necessarily the fastest one. And so you can, with certain routers, you can try different frequencies and do your speed tests and, and whatnot, and choose the one that actually works best for you. A couple other things, I wanted to make sure I could have one router to sort of rule them all. <laughs> that could handle AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile are the three carriers that I wanted to have available to me so that as I travel, if I have a problem with one, I can switch to the other. At a bare minimum, I think I would want Verizon and AT&T. T-Mobile is a sort of accidental nice to have. It would be really bad, obviously, if I chose to go somewhere and both Verizon and AT&T weren't providing me good enough internet service where T-Mobile might. And so that's, you know, if you think about if you if you've been in the in the sort of the operations IT operations area, you never run uh, one or two servers from a redundancy perspective. You always run at least three. You sort of you can call that um, one for me, one for you, and one just in case. The other thing that I've been thinking about was wouldn't it be nice if you could have multiple SIM cards inserted and it would fail over between them automatically? That wasn't really a requirement. You know, if I have to, especially especially as I uh, I'll be talking about this. With a directional antenna, if you you're figuring to fail over from one provider to another, you can't really do that if you're using a directional antenna, uh, unless they happen to be on the same physical tower. That wasn't a requirement, but I I was looking at it. Like I mentioned, Wi-Fi rebroadcasting, not necessary. So if this were a cellular only solution, that's fine with me. And if I want to use Wi-Fi, I can either attach, of course, to it directly, or I can reconnect the uh, the wine guard and use that instead. As I touched upon earlier, I wanted to build a custom directional antenna just to maximize my signal, my speeds. And it's turned out that having that directional antenna can certainly improve your download speeds. It, re it improves reliability of your data, your transmission, and that sort of thing. You're, you're, you're more consistent. It's had a much bigger impact on my upload speeds, which is fantastic for things like uploading these videos. I also had to make sure that the directional antenna setup that I came up with didn't lock me into, again, any particular carrier. So the setup had to work for all the different carriers and all the different bands that they worked on. That comes at a cost of um, not getting the best performance that you could. So if you aren't going to be moving around, you can buy an antenna that is for a specific frequency and uh, you'll get uh, even better performance out of that. But this one's a little bit on um, more on the generic side. 
to give me the greatest flexibility as I move around. I looked at and I almost purchased the uh, the Wi-Fi Ranger Sky Pro uh, LTE, and there were two reasons I ended up not doing that. I actually had had told them to put it together for me, and I was they were waiting for my credit card, and I t I ended up telling them to cancel the order. So I canceled it because it would have been something on the eight hundred dollar range. I wanted the, the advanced router inside that had the gig e ports the whole package all said and done was something around 800 plus dollars and it did not do category the, the advanced um, lte it also turns out that, that swapping out the sim card like if you wanted to change carriers uh, meant visiting the roof so that um, shut that option for me down i looked at the pep wave router i don't specifically remember anymore why i chose not to do that it might have been the advanced lack of advanced lte perhaps unfortunately i don't remember lo and behold what i ended up uh, going with was uh, something from mofi networks the the mofi 4500 let's get this right the 4g x e l t e sim 4 combo <laughs> the model number i'll link to that uh, in the description uh, the video description so you can find it there they have a, a number of slightly slight variations on that model that router I bought from them. I think it was actually cheaper from them than even Amazon or any, anywhere else I could find. That router is $315, plus they had charged a $15 uh, shipping. I received it uh, within a week, I believe, of my order, so that, that went well. That router is actually, if you've ever been exposed to, say, a home router, link, like a home Linksys router, Netgear, any of those kinds of routers, uh, they often are running a specialized version of, of Linux and customized by the manufacturer and then folks who are really into uh, customizing the router or getting the best speeds possible and that sort of stuff I, you know I'm not I'm not crazy about that I actually did not do this to my home router but you can run software called open WRT on that on those routers and gain full access to the, the hardware and do all sorts of crazy customization Turns out that is the exact same software that's running on the uh, the MoFi 4500. They've they've just placed their own interface on top of it, but you can SSH into the server, being a router, and uh, you know do all sorts of really low-level Linux things if you're comfortable with that sort of thing. The reason I mention that is because OpenWRT is a long-standing, well-known, reputable uh, operating system for routers, uh, as opposed to some highly customized thing that's very vendor specific and and, uh, and whatnot and because it's a it's an open source community uh, situation it's undergone um, a whole lot of scrutiny testing and that sort of thing so it's it's very high quality so that was really attractive to me as i was making that uh, particular purchase decision in addition to the uh, the physical router i bought some mounting equipment and two directional uh, yagi antennas uh, so if you if you point them at a 90 degree angle, you know, towards uh, the, the tower, you're getting a MIMO configuration. If you get one versus two, you're not talking about a heck of a lot of incremental cost overall for the entire system. And um, you might as well take advantage of, you know, if you're, if you're putting a pole up, pointing an antenna, you might as well have two of them instead of one. So you'll get better performance that way. Then the internet options, uh, I have. So I started off with uh, liveandlight.com's AT&T service. They, they had Verizon. It's currently uh, sold out. They have AT&T. That is truly unlimited, uncapped. There's no throttling. There's no you know congestion maintenance after you go over 50 gig of data, that kind of stuff. It is 100% unlimited. That particular plan is $120 a month. I have seen that uh, you can buy uh, SIM cards on eBay, the sellers have a lot of uh, good feedback on them um, for $30 a month. So my one of my next things to do here, my all my experimentation is to go f get one of those cards and try them out. I could potentially reduce the AT&T side of the house from $120 to $30 a month. I mentioned before I have my T-Mobile phone, the, the J3, so I can take that SIM card out of the phone and I, I have successfully done this and I can put that in the MoFi 4500 and get T-Mobile service that way. And then I added uh, Verizon recently. And the reason I did that is because here at the campground, both AT&T and T-Mobile were not providing good service, even with the directional antenna. Um, the max I could get was three bars, which isn't, you know, should give you pretty good uh, internet speeds, but there are towers or it's, there's something going on in, on their network here um, that's making their, their internet relatively unreliable, especially at night, which I, I, I think is a, a peak time 
in the area for them. So, you know, I, I, my internet would just go to hell <laughs> basically, uh, at night. And, uh, that, uh, meant I couldn't stream and I, you know, it would just, it just became unusable. Verizon here, and I, because I have my personal iPhone is on, uh, Verizon, I was doing speed tests there. I mean, I had, you know, all four bars of signal strength and speed tests were reporting 50 to 60 megabits per second download and I think 18 upload. And that's, that's just from the phone. So uh, you can only imagine what a full fledged uh, hotspot router with a directional antenna would, uh, would be like, uh, assuming that, that the internet backhaul from their tower uh, wasn't overloaded. I spoke to the person at the office here about internet options too, and she said that uh, uh, Verizon was known to be good here. Back to eBay, I went, managed to find a, a card. This is th this is what's going to hurt you. I found a card on uh, eBay, a SIM card. They shipped uh, a, a card to me for $170, and it's $170 a month. It's uh, completely unlocked, unlimited Verizon. I think all of these cards, I've not done a heck of a lot of research into it. I've read um, that anytime you're coming across cards like these, that uh, or even a service like Live and Light, you're effectively breaching terms of service with the carrier and your internet could go out at any time should the carrier decide to shut you down. Another good reason to have multiple options is in case Verizon decided to say, sorry, <laughs> uh, we're going to kill your your SIM card uh, because you're using way too much data um, and you're in clear violation, then then I'm not going to be screwed. So that said, both Live and Light and the uh, sellers on eBay for these cards have said that they've got customers who are using you know, hundreds of gigs a month um, and that hasn't been an issue. I meant to before the video, so what I'll, what I'll do between cuts uh, as I go through this, I was going to look at how much data I've used. I reset my statistics on the router the other day, and at that point, I'd already used like 200 gig of, <laughs> of data uh, on the Verizon card, and it's only been uh, a week and a half or or two weeks, perhaps. I'm clearly blowing through a lot of data, and that's that's been working great. The other advantage that router has is it has four gigabit Ethernet ports on the back of it, as opposed to what I had previously with the WineGuard and a lot of the other situations, um, which is part of what played a role in here. Is they they would have maybe one port or they might have three or four ports, but they were 100 meg. Gig was important to me because I'm eventually going to be installing like a Synology NAS inside uh, the RV here. That'll help me with storing data for, you know, all the videos that I'm making here. And I'll have the laptop plugged into ethernet so I can uh, transfer data at gigabit speeds. Uh, and, uh, and that NAS would also be used for storing videos so I can get rid of DVDs. I can, instead of replaying episodes of Family Guy, which is my favorite TV show over and over again, uh, on uh, Hulu, which is just needlessly ending up uh, eating up bandwidth, I can just stream it locally. So that device is, is going to be coming soon. And so that played a role in having gigabit. Not related to gigabit per se, but the Ethernet that comes on the MoFi 4500 appears to be more compatible or stable or whatever you want to call it than was on the WineGuard. The TM555, the Silverleaf TM555 module, which provides the uh, the MyRosy capabilities, is supposed to be hardwired. It's, it is physically hardwired into the WineGuard. Uh, what previously, it is now hardwired into the MoFi 4500. If I were to look at the status light on the 555 module, the link light on, would, on that would come and go. And so uh, it was never able to provide connectivity and so I had to change the, the 555 module from Ethernet to Wi-Fi and configure Wi-Fi and have it go over Wi-Fi for all of its communications which you know just needlessly, needlessly eats up bandwidth and is kind of a waste because there's an Ethernet cable that's designed to connect the two devices together but for whatever reason it wasn't playing nice with the WineGuard so it is playing nice with the MoFi and so I've set it back to Ethernet and it's been working great so another nice little sort of side bonus there. A couple little anecdotal differences sort of before and after. This is on the MoFi 4500. It comes with two sort of paddle-shaped uh, antennas for LTE as well as two more antennas for Wi-Fi, but the two antennas for LTE are I think 5 dBi, plus 5 dBi antennas, paddle-shaped, um, I forget, you know, they're about that, maybe the size of my head, <laughs> probably smaller than that, um, big head. The numbers I'm about to give you will compare uh, the built-in uh, the antennas that came with the unit versus the directional uh, antenna 
that uh, I installed. So at back at home um, near the Boston area where I used to live, I was on AT&T and I would get 14 meg down and 7 meg up. And when I switched to the directional antenna, it went again from it went from being 14 down to 42 down and from 7 up to 28 up. And I don't remember the previous ping time, but I had a 39 millisecond ping time, uh, which is not bad as on cellular. So here, like I mentioned before, AT&T and T-Mobile weren't cutting it, so I've switched to Verizon. The speeds weren't greatly affected um, because the signal is so strong here. My phone, my iPhone directly on Verizon would get about the same speeds, uh, you know, 40 to 50 megabits, sometimes 60 megabits down and 18 up. I did see a little bit of a gain. I got, I was getting about 22 up on, on the MoFi. Generally speaking, the MoFi is providing sort of more consistent speeds and performance than something else would have provided. Uh, I've noted that it is especially true in the case of inclement weather. I've had um, a lot of rain here recently and the networks have not been doing particularly well. I'm actually shocked at how much of an impact that that rain has, whether that's because it is having an impact on radio signals or if it's because more people are staying at home and using their phones, I, or I have no idea, but that has definitely been something I've noted, at least here, the, the weather has had a pretty big impact. It literally made the campground Wi-Fi go offline. It made uh, T-Mobile and AT&T completely useless during the day. And the only thing that survived through all of that was Verizon. What I'm going to do next is video, uh, do a video walkthrough of the physical unit, the antenna setup that I have, and I'm going to go through a little bit of the user interface. There's no way I'm going to go through the entire user interface of the MoFi 4500. There'd be no point in doing so, and I don't want to really scare you either. The interface might look really daunting. There's a whole lot of stuff you can configure, but there is a configuration wizard in it. Um, you will get up and running easily. All of those links are basically like if you really, if you know what you're doing, if you want to customize stuff, if you want to, you know, go uh, do some crazy things, uh, you could certainly do that. Um, but you don't have to, and if you don't, it'll work. Let's move on to uh, something a little bit more fun, like taking a look at the antenna and uh, and the router and what I've done for it. We'll note that um, that the arrangement that I have here is uh, is, is a temporary setup. I have not figured out what, what to do with respect to routing the wires yet, so please don't judge me. <laughs> so, what I've got here, uh, a few components. There's a really good suction cup here with uh, a, a, a setup here basically to be able to connect, uh, you know, wrap, wrap around a one inch PVC uh, pipe that becomes your mast. And I got that from Techno RV. Again, I'll link that in the, the video. And I have found that this particular uh, suction cup uh, has been enough. Th this is a really lightweight setup. It might look like it's heavy, especially with those two things on top. It doesn't really weigh much. I haven't been through um, extreme wind yet. I, it's probably been subjected to 20, 30 mile an hour gusts. And I haven't been worried about it. It's been staying put for weeks on end um, through all the rain and whatnot. And it's been very stable. I did get a second one just in case that I could maybe mount up here, for example, and, and provide a little more rigidity that way. But it's been doing fine um, just like just like this so you'll notice the two um, antennas there in a MIMO configuration they really should be uh, instead of at instead of you know uh, horizontal and uh, vertical they really should be at 45 degree angles but the for some reason the manufacturer including mounting brackets that did not allow me to do that they were shocked um, at, at that and but weren't willing to provide me <laughs> replacement brackets whatever it doesn't matter that they're mounted like this the only reason it might matter is is if it uh, if you have this in the winter um, you don't really want snow piling up on top of that just from a weight loading perspective so that's really the only disadvantage of that um, and then an, uh, one cable for each antenna comes in and and again don't judge me <laughs> i have it coming into some foam here uh, which goes through the other side um, i'm going to make a note here to use the shortest cables possible so one of the reasons I've chose this location um, was because the router is on the other side of this window and that gives me the shortest run possible um, for the antenna because the longer these, these wires are, especially at higher frequencies, the greater your loss is. So you might get some really great antennas, but if you've got a 50 foot long uh, run, especially at higher frequencies, you're going to just undo all of those gains uh, that you spent money on um, putting together. So keep, keep those wires as short as possible. Right. Again judgment-free zone right here 
this is the antenna coming antenna wire coming in i left i left the screen down like this uh, specifically to show you that um this is how i'm kind of going from the window and around the screen so both the both this one and the blackout will come down uh, without an issue every time i do do it i just kind of have to make sure that this doesn't uh, catch anything and, and cause problems but whatever um so the wires come in and they go up to the 4500 device here so let's take that down and you'll see this small device here and so these these are the wi-fi antennas these are these are have been actually really incredible uh i, I have been uh receiving you know full wi-fi strength inside the coach which i was not getting before on the wine guard like if i were in the bedroom i would start to lose a little signal and I have been amazed at how far away from the coach I can be and still get signals. So these do a really great job. And so there's two of those. And what I what what I've done here is I I uh, got the the wires connected to a 90 degree connector and then into the antenna ports on both sides here. The antennas that come with the unit are these guys. So there's two of these guys, and they they also uh, pivot just like. Just like these do so uh, you know if you're traveling uh, or if you find that you don't need the directional antenna you'll just put these in place instead of the external antenna so uh, you know of course you know every time I, I travel I, I tear down I you know take that down I stow it reconnect these and then I have my uh, signal while I am traveling on the back you'll see four giggy ports and there is a WAN port the WAN port can be used for a couple of different things including failover so uh, if you have um, Wi-Fi coming in that way then um, that could be your primary and you can fail over where you can fail over the other direction um, you can also plug in I haven't tried this yet um, I believe um, USB so you can tether like a like, like my phone I could tether to this and make that another uh, source of internet and make and and make it primary or or a backup there is a GPS option in here, which I didn't get, um, and there is a slot for micro SD card if you wanted to. You can actually use this kind of as a file server uh, as well, so um, I'm choosing not to do that. And then the SIM card is this right here on the side, and uh, you know if I want to switch from Verizon to AT&T or T-Mobile, I just pop that out, uh, change the setting on the router, and, and let it reboot, and away I go. So. It does come with a uh, 120 volt AC adapter. I'm desperately trying to remember right now if it comes with a 12 volt. I honestly can't remember right now. I think it does, uh, but the, the packaging would uh, should tell you if you look online. Anyway, I didn't bother to try and wire this in to the, you know like the WineGuard Connect 12 volt sources here. Um, that is actually attached to um, this switch here. So I leave this off. Uh, if I want to um, switch to the to the wine guard in order to do Wi-Fi broadcasting, I'll flip the switch on. I'll unplug this guy. The the wine guard, which I have off to the side here, will will uh, use the same SSID that I have this configured for. So inside the coach, I don't really have to reconfigure anything. Um, and that's how I can switch over back over to Wi-Fi if I uh, if I want to. But I really haven't found that to be useful yet. So and that just sits up there, and that is my uh the physical layout of my my internet solution here is the web interface for the mofi 4500 and we're at the login screen here i'm using uh, firefox as my browser and uh that is because if you use chrome it, it'll, it'll uh, have this consistently annoying red banner at the top saying you really shouldn't use chrome you know you could cause problems with saving data and corruption and blah 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 uh, and I don't know whether or not, not that's really true, but whatever, I can use Firefox, that's easy enough. So anyway, so we come in, we log in, and you're presented with um, a whole slew of menu items and some overview information. And funny enough, this is actually the basic view. If we go to the advanced view, uh, you'll get even more. I, I, despite the fact that this is the kind of stuff that I that I do for a living, I don't use the advanced. It's just way beyond, uh, I, I think, even what a power user would need to want need to do here. So, uh, the the front page here gives you a couple of uh, useful links, including what your IP address is, and uh, so 
uh, one of my favorite things to do, especially when I set up campground, is uh, because I because my phone is an is an iPhone. If you use uh, something like Open Signal, it does not give you an arrow on the app to tell you where your cell phone tower is. So um, it's it's a lot harder to find where your tower is. You can use um, uh, a website. I'm for blanking on what the, what, what the name is, but you can use a website to try and find out where your tower is. Again, that ends up being kind of hard to figure out. The fastest thing for me to do, frankly, is to just take my either my laptop or my phone outside while I have the antenna with me, open up this page, and I continue to turn the antenna around until I get the most signal strength here. So you can see I've got five bars of, of signal uh, here on my uh, on my Verizon network. So uh, you can also tell what band you're on. I'm on band B13, um, you know, at, at 10 megahertz and, and that sort of stuff. So um, that's about the only time I come in and, and use this is if I'm setting up and I'm just trying to find my, uh, find the, the best direction for the antenna. The, uh, the other thing I will do is if I'm not particularly satisfied with the performance that I'm getting once I've aimed the antenna, uh, is you can come in and, and you can use the band lock feature. So um, <clears throat> you can come in here and say, all right, I want to you know, lock onto one of these bands. Don't try to automatically determine the band because you know perhaps B13 isn't actually the best band. Uh, let's go find another band. And so in order to do that, you actually have to come into band scanner you can hit start scan and what that'll do is it'll take a look at what's available in your area uh, because even if Verizon operates on say three different bands in general it's not necessarily true that all three bands are available in your area so you'll come in here you'll run this it'll give you a uh, uh, an overview of everything available and then what you can do is once this comes back you can say oh this particular band uh, let's say in my case band B2 which is 15 megahertz is available it is a much uh, weaker signal so it might be at a different tower um, that I should aim at uh, prior to making a judgment but I can lock onto it now so I would go back over to band lock I'd tell it to lock onto band B2 uh, that requires a reboot and uh, and then go from there so um, I have yet to actually find uh, that it's it's better to lock on a particular uh, band so far, but again, this is really only the second, third place I've been at um, with this particular antenna setup. So I uh, I use that um, as I set up camp. Um, under uh, bandwidth, I'll come in. Uh, yeah, so I I reset my bandwidth before it was 202 gig. I I, I wish I remember. I should I should write these things down. It might have been yesterday or the day before. Look how much I've used in in two days. Um, so uh, you know I'm a, obviously I'm a heavy duty user. Um, you know you you know if you if you really want to right this is the thing you have access to all of this sort of stuff if you if you want to if this stuff is important to you so um, you know the kinds of things that you just won't have access to uh, elsewhere. Um, support logs if you've got an issue. Um, the folks at uh, the MoFi network have been responsive to me in general. They're always providing software updates for this thing. Um, when I when I first purchased it, there was a, uh, it was relatively relatively speaking far behind on the on the software version, and and since then it's only been I don't know two months. Um, they've provided several um, versions of uh, software with the various bug fixes and uh, you know feature enhancements or additions. So that's awesome to see. That there's active development on this. Um, you can go through the network, uh, you know, the wizard setup if you want to, which it'll, I believe it, it'll do, it'll prompt you to do when you first turn this on. Um, under network, you can get all kinds of information about what's, uh, what all your hardware in interfaces are on, and um, more importantly, the, the modem itself. And this is important when you're doing uh, initial setup or if you're swapping SIM cards to different providers. So. Um, you'll come in here and you'll want to make sure that you're seeing a phone number, that you're seeing a SIM ID, and all that sort of stuff, and that it matches what you're expecting off of your SIM card. I've had issues with that, and, and if, that, if that occurs, your internet might not work correctly. So you can reset the phone number and SIM ID here and reset the Sierra, the Sierra module, which is the LTE modem, uh, and that'll wipe out the config and start over, and, and things will usually catch up. I mentioned earlier that TTL hack, so you can put, you know, this defaulted to, uh, I think, the correct uh, item um, that'll kind of 
trick the carrier into thinking you're a phone and not a hotspot and usually you get better performance that way. Um, here's where you'll come in. If you, you'll be like, all right, if I'm going to switch from Verizon to at and I'll put the, I'll, I'll, uh, uh, you know, I'll switch this to at and I'll put the new SIM card in and, uh, and then wipe out the, the settings that I mentioned on the previous page and just make sure everything comes up that way. Um, and generic works for T-Mobile. Obviously, Sprint works for Sprint. So I have used uh, the all top three of these successfully, and that's been working great for me. So um, under Wi-Fi, this is where you'll set up your uh, your SSID. If uh, if you haven't been following that, the <laughs> the name of my RV is Destiny, and so my Wi-Fi is Son of Destiny, and the name of the the Jeep that I carry with me is Destiny's Child. So <laughs> I've got that theme going here. Um, relatively standard Wi-Fi set up here. Uh, you can do um, public Wi-Fi here if you wanted to, uh, and uh, and you, you know obviously generally speaking you're probably not going to do that in an RV situation. So, uh, but you have the power to do that. So you know captive portal to get people to log in, and I just the list goes on and on here. You can do quality of service, uh, port forwarding. Um, uh, all kinds of you know USB printer, um, VPN. Uh, what do we got in here? Um, you know factory reset. If you really screw something up, this is where you can update the uh, the firmware. You can reboot it. You can actually have a scheduled reboot so that what the router reboots itself at, uh, at at a particular time every day. And there's also a watchdog in here. I forget where it is. Um, I'm probably staring right at it, but it, it can test the internet for you and if it's down for more than some particular period of time uh, it will reboot itself just to make sure it hasn't gone offline the reason you want to do something like that is if you've left your coach and you want to remotely monitor it via my rosie for example if the router you know loses its mind you're not going to be able to look at your coach but if the router um you know can detect that it's lost its mind which is what that watchdog feature is uh, it can reboot and hopefully get itself back online so you can do your firewall tweaks here and all kinds of crazy um, stuff so I haven't I've touched you know probably 10% if that of this interface uh, but this is the reason I, I like it um, so uh, I don't know what else I could possibly go through here that's particularly useful to do in this video um, feel free to ask questions and I will be happy to answer them thank you so much for watching